Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Today we're going to take a look at the basic toggle switch and how to interface that with a Raspberry Pi and with MicroPython. In this video we're going to cover a little explanation about what a toggle switch is, their applications, we'll review a data sheet so that we get an understanding of the important attributes. We'll take a look at a fritzing wiring diagram so you know how to hook them up. And finally, we'll take a look at the MicroPython code used to handle them. Toggle switches date back to the very early 1900s, perhaps even into the late 1800s. And their first application was for light switches as modern electricity was coming into homes to replace gas lighting. Their configurations have varied greatly over the years, um, but there are some very basic commonalities. This particular unit here is a typical uh, toggle switch uh, that's used in electrical and electronics. It has an actuator that was commonly referred to as a bat, and that just flips up and down. And it'll give you uh, two states. Some toggle switches will have three conditions. Off in the middle, on at the top, and an on for another circuit at the bottom. And some of them are even momentary in action. Now this is a miniature one. I use a, these a lot. Uh, I do like the, uh, the retro styling of them. So I do find favoritism for this type of switch. But I go for the smaller ones. Uh, just because modern electronics tend to be much smaller. The one we're using in our example today is a larger uh, toggle switch. This would be commonly referred to as a paddle switch because the actuator looks more like a paddle than a bat. Um, as typical with a lot of toggle switches, they're panel mounted. This one has uh, uh, quick connect terminals. You can uh, use the uh, slide-on connectors. This one is solder only as you can see. Um, the other thing to note that this particular unit would handle much lower uh, voltage and amperage combined than this particular unit. This one here is actually for an automotive purposes so we know it's rated for 12 volts and probably very high amperage. Unfortunately with a lot of switches that are sold today they don't put markings on it uh, so that you understand what its rating is. So if you buy them, keep the packaging, otherwise you won't know uh, what they're capable of when you go to use it in the future. For applications, uh, typically we use them a lot in turning off uh, power devices. Uh, for example, a light switch in your home. We might see them used on uh, a device to turn its power on and off. Again, that's getting uh, less and less common uh, just because of the, the size of a, a toggle switch and how far it might stick out from a panel. There's other switches that have become much more favorable. Um, but they're also used to turn something on or off, a state of something. Now, electrically, we would think of them used to turn a motor on or off, a light on or off. But in a microcontroller, we can also use it to turn a feature on and off that exists within our MicroPython code. We would be switching a state or a feature on or off with that switch. And that's where we'll be focusing most of our attention today. Now we're going to take a look at the data sheet so that we can get an understanding of a couple of the important attributes for switches uh, that would help us decide if it will work or not work. Now in our application I'm looking at this from a low voltage side, meaning uh, in our case 3.3 volts and a very very tiny amount of current. So in reality almost any switch will work uh, with the, the Pico. Uh, but we should always check a few things just to make sure uh, we're doing things uh, least close to right. Uh, here is the important ones that I always look for is what the contact rating is. It's uh, 0.4 volt amps, uh, meaning at a maximum of 20 volts. So it's just, this particular switch is uh, quite low. Uh, you wouldn't want to switch a lot of high-powered electronics with it. 
Uh, the mechanical life is 30,000 make and break cycles, so that may be something you also have to consider uh, if you're selecting this particular toggle switch. Um, other things um, they will be talking about in here, some of the materials that the device is made of uh, that could be important in industrial applications or consumers. Um, and then they talk about uh, dimensions and their uh, single pole, double throw, uh, single po double pole, double throw, etc. Uh, configurations for the lugs on the backside. Uh, and then they're going to talk about mounting, PCB mounting. Um, this would be a panel mount. We can see the threaded collar up here. Uh, so you can find a lot of good information on them, and uh, it just makes good sense to get in the habit of checking data sheets uh, before you put an electronic device into service. The basic toggle switch is incredibly simple to wire up, and we'll start by reviewing that here on a Fritzing diagram with our Raspberry Pi Pico. Now we're going to be working with 3.3 volts, so I'm pulling this wire here, which is our 3.3 output from the Pico, and I'm going to bring that around up to our positive rail on the breadboard. I also run a ground rail all the time, uh, so in case I need it, it's handy for me when I'm doing prototyping. In our example, here's our toggle switch. It's uh, connected to the breadboard via flying leads. We're on GP pin number 15. So that would go to uh, one of the uh, terminals on the back of the toggle switch. And then the common terminal would connect back to, in our case, the positive voltage rail. When you turn the switch on, that will complete the circuit of power going through this rail, through the switch, and then into our input on the Pico. And you'll notice that we're not using a physical pull-down resistor. We'll be doing that in software. Over here at the breadboard, you can see that this is wired up uh, exactly the same as shown in the Fritzing diagram. Even the wire colors are matching. Uh, but nonetheless, just to look at the important part of our circuit, we're going from 3.3 out on the Pi Pico to our positive rail. We go through our yellow wire into the switch, comes out the switch through the blue wire into GP15. Nothing magical there. And again, you'll notice there is no physical pull-down resistor on the actual breadboard, and we'll be doing that in um, MicroPython. When using a toggle switch the way we are, we really want to look at the state of the switch. We're not concerned about the transition from off to on or on to off. And that's really uh, what you would focus on with a momentary switch. With this type of switch, you want to check the state of it at the time you need the information. And that's what we'll do in our program here. Uh, we're going to uh, load in our libraries that are needed. We're going to load in the machine library, which gives us access to the hardware pins. And we're going to load in the micro uh, Python version of the time library, which allows us to create a sleep or a pause in our program. And we're just using that to slow things down uh, so that we can uh, see how things are running. We're going to use the onboard LED. And that's right here on the Pi Pico, right in this area here. And we're just going to use that as part of the work that we're going to do uh, with a cause and effect of the position in this switch. So we create the LED object. We just simply call it LED. I'm using machine pin 25, and I set up that pin as an output. And that way we can turn the LED on and off. We're going to create an object for our actual switch. And we're going to call it toggle switch. Seems logical for a toggle switch. If you've got multiples, you may want to use toggle underscore SW, underscore one, two, three, four, etc. So we're going to create the object toggle switch, which is a machine.pin, and it is pin number GP15, and we're saying I want that pin to behave as an input using the IN, and then we're going to give it a, a pull-up resistor, or I'm sorry, a pull-down resistor so that the switch 
would certainly be in the zero state when nothing is connected to it, and therefore it isn't floating. We're going to use a polling method uh, to compare uh, and handle the on-off uh, switch. Uh, we just I have this habit of printing ready, set, go at the start of my MicroPython programs. Don't know why, just got in the habit, haven't stopped. Um, but here's our what would typically be the main loop in your uh, MicroPython program. You always have a main loop that's constantly cycling. Now here's the, the real tricky part of the magic of reading the position of the switch. We're going to say with a conditional statement, if toggle switch dot value is equal to true, meaning it's on, if GP input, if input GP15 is high, on, we'll turn the LED on. And then I'm going to print down below here, on. And then that way we can kind of monitor what's going on. The other condition would be if the toggle switch value is equal to false or zero, meaning if the input GP15 is low, we'll print off and then we'll turn our LED off. Now in these two areas here and here is where you would do your real work or you would be making a comparison at some feature or section of code where you may want it to run or not run you would put your code in this area to handle that. And then finally, we've got our sleep routine slowing down the loop. Now let's run it and see what its behavior is really like. Currently, the switch is in the off state. I'll flip it up. We'll see that the LED comes on. Very simple, it's just following the position of the switch. We're not turning the electricity on and off to that LED. The Pico is doing that through our MicroPython code. And as you can see here, we're seeing the on and off changing as well with our print statement. And that's truly how easy it is to use a toggle switch in MicroPython. I think that'll wrap it up for our discussion on toggle switches on the Raspberry Pi Pico using MicroPython. As with most of the videos in this series, we have files that you can download, which would include uh, the fit fritzing diagram and source code, uh, perhaps some other information uh, as needed. You can download that from our companion website, makingstuffwithchrisdayhut.com. Links are provided in the description below. I'd also like to mention that there's probably about 50 or 60 total videos planned for this series on the Raspberry Pi Pico and interfacing it using it uh, with a variety of devices. You can find more information about the full series on our companion website with links to each of the videos and a, a complete description. I'd like to express my thanks. I really do appreciate you spending time watching the video with me today. Uh, hopefully you found it informative or entertaining. Um, if so, I would hope that you'll subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already costs you nothing, so it's uh, certainly very good value. Uh, if you like the video, please click the like button, and uh, there's this notification bell somewhere in that same area that allows you to be notified whenever I publish a new video. So that can be kind of handy if you're following along, especially with this video series on the Raspberry Pi Pico. With that, I hope to see you in the next video.